We're about to break down the breaking news around Micah Parsons being placed on the COVID-19 list for the Dallas Cowboys. Before we do that, though, this is why you guys subscribe. Hit that big red button for free videos all year long on all the news, rumors, and everything around America's team. Some bad news this morning for the, not this morning, today for the Dallas Cowboys. Micah Parsons has been placed on the COVID-19 list, and in all likelihood, this means Micah Parsons will not be playing in Week 18 of the NFL season against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Cowboys have announced he's been placed on the list. Now, as a vaccinated player, what this almost assuredly means is Parsons has tested positive and he has symptoms as well. Now, under the NFL's new COVID guidelines, Parsons does have a chance of being cleared in time to play Saturday on the road against Philadelphia if his symptoms go away, if he has a negative test. It's a bit of a stretch. The more likely outcome is he's back and fine for the playoffs. So Parsons' stat line is known for the NFL regular season, and I think this is better than what even the most optimistic Cowboys fans were hoping to get out of Parsons this year. 84 tackles, and Micah pass rusher was on full display so far this year. He was nothing short of incredible for the Dallas Cowboys, being a high-impact player, not just an off-ball linebacker, but rather a high-impact player for Dallas, being able to step up and emerge and do everything and more asked of him so far this season. He's been an, an incredible asset to the Dallas Cowboys, and I do not want to underestimate how understate how wrong I was about Micah's impact for the Dallas Cowboys and the job he has done, the job that Dan Quinn has done, being able to maximize him so far this season. Now, Micah pass rusher side is, eh, it should be okay. Still have Demarcus Lawrence, still have Randy Gregory, Chauncey Golston, Terrell Basham, Dorrance Armstrong will all be able to make an impact here as well for the Dallas Cowboys of being able to play and edge rush Oso Odigizua, Neville Gallimore will probably get a little bit more reps this week because you won't utilize Lawrence, Gregory, and Parsons all out there as your front four in your pass rush package. Linebacker, though, a little bit thinner there. Now, Leighton Van Der Esch has played better since me, you, and many of them rightfully ripped him for playing poorly. He's been a much better player as of late. But Francis Bernard also banged up. Keanu Neal, for now, with Neal missing three games this year due to COVID, tested positive twice. Those two players are should be back, but still have to be fully clear. But I would anticipate those guys being back and being good to go for the Cowboys. So for the time being, though, it's just Leighton Van Der Esch and Luke Gifford. So what is your panic level over Micah Parsons being out in a less important Week 18 game? Scale this for me, 1 to 10. 1 being you're not worried at all, 10 being freaking out. Season's over. Let me know what you guys have to say at the pinned comment of today's video. I myself am at like a 2 right now. Had you needed this game to make the playoffs or whatever, I'd have been freaking out. Even though I don't expect Parsons to play against Philly, it's not the end of the world. You, A, should be able to beat Philly anyway, and B, even if you lose, eh, you are probably going to be the four seed no matter what, although I know we'll be melting down if the Cowboys lose to Philly. I know, I know everyone too well. Technically, again, Parsons could be cleared in time. That is an unlikely outcome uh, for just the timing involved with a Wednesday to Saturday turnaround. But what matters the most here, he should be just fine for the postseason. He should be able to be out there, no problems, no issues, and be the high-impact player he's been all season long for Dallas. Now, if you want to bet on the Cowboys to win a playoff game, beat Philadelphia, or if you want to bet on Parsons to win Defensive Player of the Year, you can do it with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Cowboys125, 100 bucks in, boom, extra 125 for free to bet with. 
With T.J. Watt dominating on Monday Night Football against the crappy Browns team and Micah Parsons now being ruled out for Week 18, I think those odds are going to dip. Uh, we had we grabbed those odds before, you know, right as the news came down. Parsons, he's not going to win it. It's, it's, it's going to be T.J. Watt, unfortunately. But make no mistake, Parsons had a Defensive Player of the Year caliber season. Just so happens that T.J. Watt had a pretty damn good one as well. All right, some more Cowboys news and one rumor I want to discuss here. J. Ron Curse, this one kind of flying under the radar because of the Parsons news, but Curse is currently dealing with a hamstring injury, and it is unclear per head coach Mike McCarthy just how much Curse will do at practice this week. In fact, I wonder if Curse is even going to play this week for Dallas. The Cowboys had three players on their injury report on Wednesday could see a similar list or excuse me, injury report on Tuesday could see a similar list on Wednesday Ezekiel Elliott was full with a knee we'll come back to Zeke later on by the way keep an, uh, stay tuned for that J. Ron Curse is currently dealing with a hamstring injury as well we just mentioned that Tony Pollard the foot injury the Elliott Pollard stuff is not new we've known that for a while uh, in terms of the situation involving Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott. It's the curse one that is certainly the unfortunate development. And hopefully, he ends up being okay for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, in the event that he is unable to go, this is where things currently sit for Dallas at the safety position. Now, what the Cowboys did that, again, kind of flew under the radar in terms of the safety rotation, Donovan Wilson played more snaps than both DeMonte Casey and Lee Cooker. In fact, it was DeMonte Casey who was safety four in that game. Pretty even split with Lee Cooker. Curious how that develops this week. They went heavy multiple safety package because they were oh so thin at the position at linebacker with all their injuries. Kerr's had a fantastic year this season. Curious to see, though, if he ends up playing this week for the Cowboys with that nagging, nursing, I should say, hamstring injury. So predict it for me. Will Curse play this week? Type in Y for yes or type in N for no. Let me know what you guys have to say right now in the comments. I think because this is a meaningless-ish, or less meaningful, I should say, Week 18 matchup, if Curse is not 100%, sit him. If you run the risk of making the injury worse by playing him, I see no reason to put him out there. Sit him. You don't want to risk losing what really is a pretty key piece of your defense. Do not jeopardize Curse to maybe improve your stock in terms of a playoff seeding this year. Curse has been awesome this season. 101 tackles, one of the leading tacklers for Dallas. Nine tackles for loss, 10 pass breakups. He's gone from being cut by the Detroit Lions midseason to make it himself bank this upcoming year as that box safety that has done a fantastic job so far for Dallas. Do not jeopardize him if you do not need to. Then there's the sit Zeke question. This one's back per blog and the boys, the SB Nation fan site. They suggested resting uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Elliott's made it clear he wants to play. The injury's not going to get worse by him playing through it and playing on it, at least so he says and the Cowboys say, and he wants to get 1,000 rushing yards, although Zeke has not been 100% this year. So what do you think? Would you play Zeke this week, or would you just maybe rest him a little bit? Type in R for rest Zeke, or type in P for play Zeke. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Elliott's not that far away from a 1,000-yard season. 219 carries, 915 yards. He was really good to start the year when he was 100%, then wasn't quite 100% as the year went on and is now kind of lagging a little bit in that, or in that area. The production has not been the same level. Tony Pollard, by the way, well, if you rest Zeke, you'd probably give more work for Pollard, but Pollard's also dealing with his own foot injury now. I thought he looked pretty damn good against Washington, but then also didn't 
play that much against Arizona. Does it mean more Corey Clement? This is the tricky conversation you have to have if you're the Dallas Cowboys of how do you manage the workload of your key players when you're trying to win but are also not in a must-win situation. We'll know more when the game actually gets going. One last minor news note here. AT&T Stadium has been approached by the NFL as a potential Super Bowl backup site set to be played at the new LA Rams slash Chargers Stadium. The NFL does this each year. Uh, I don't think it's quite the, oh my God, breaking news situation that some have uh, have viewed it as. They do this every year, just that most years it doesn't end up getting out. Just in case of a disaster, AT&T Stadium has been approached as a backup stadium. Hopefully, wherever it is, the Cowboys are actually playing in the Super Bowl this year.